So today we're doing a review on this 2020 F-150. It's got 245,000 kilometers on it. 150,000 miles, I think that is. And I'm running pilot truck for a low bed who's uh, hauling a D6. As usual, all the trucks are running Wranglers on them. 265, 70, 17s. I got a tidy tank in the back. And I thought we got 600 kilometers to go. So we might as well do a review on this one in my journey and my quest to try and not hate Ford pickups. We'll see how I do today. Okay, while well, those guys are uh, getting ready to load that thing up, they switched it. We're not doing a D6, doing an excavator. We'll just go over the interior because it's basically the same as the F350. And I think I counted uh, 68 or 69 buttons all over this thing, <laughs> which to me, like the last video, I think it's just ridiculous. Can you uh, compact it a little bit? We don't need that many. We have 244,962 kilometers before we get started. We have an engine light on and the tire sensor light on, which I'm not blaming Ford for the tire sensor light. Chances are that was a tire shop because all of these get Goodyear Wranglers on them. And it seems to be every single Ford we have in the fleet has the engine light and the tire sensor light on. <laughs> I just filled up the tank so we'll be able to see what kind of mileage we get out of a full tank. One of my complaints is every time I get out of the truck and I go to the other side, all the doors are locked and I gotta come back and hit the unlock button. Uh, we got a bunch of added switches in that little hidden pocket and we got a CB, uh, CB radio. The stereo in this thing is awesome makes a ton of bass we have all the satellite radio one thing i should point out i don't know if you can hear it on it because of all the noise outside but this thing ticks almost sounds like a diesel hear that all of the pilot trucks in our fleet sound like that we do have a five liter in this thing we got a light bar i guess if you want me to Open the hood, we can. And this thing sees a different driver every week. It puts on anywhere from 700 to 1200 kilometers every single day, seven days a week. So I don't know what the drivers are like that are driving it. I'm sure they're not friendly to it, a lot of them. But yeah, we got a little, a little bit of valve train noise gets pretty dirty it does all highway driving winter conditions muddy conditions so that's kind of the rundown on what this thing is used for lots of highway lots of abuse from different drivers and never stops running well, they're just getting that thing loaded up I'll be on the road and uh, we'll be doing some nighttime driving. I'll figure out where the dimmer switch is on this one before it gets dark. <laughs> I see it's got the same vents as the uh, F-250s and 350s, which I like the vents. I just think it would be nice if Ford would do a little bit different design in the F-150 compared to the bigger trucks, the power strokes and everything, or the super duties, whatever you want to call them. I like the, uh, got the lighter plug in. I like that there's no ashtray because I don't smoke. One other complaint I have is this stupid feature where you pull up to the lights and the truck shuts off on you to, you know, uh, save fuel. It left me stranded this morning at lights with a low bed behind me on a downhill slope. And I actually had to put the truck in neutral and start it. So you can push it off. You can turn it off with that little button but my fear was that those are going to cause people problems. Uh, I was thinking they're going to wear starters out. But that feature seems to be intermittent. 
It also has the um, headlights where when you're driving at night and it senses another vehicle coming at you, it will turn your high beams off and go to low beams. Sometimes after the car goes by, it'll turn them back on, not always. And a lot of times it'll sense the car way off in the distance. Like so far you don't need to change your lights yet. And it just automatically dims them and the low beams on this truck suck. Like they're horrible. And uh, considering we're doing the Pine Pass back and forth in the dark, I'm a big fan of really good headlights. So, we'll uh, get into that tonight. And off we go. Low bedding is uh, one of the things I've always wanted to learn. Did not get to experience that yet. So, by being the pilot truck, I get to learn from the driver. There's another one getting ready to go to. One of the uh, things I noticed about this truck, which I didn't find in the F-350, is between the armrest on the door and the console, if I want to rest my elbows on each of them, I can't reach the steering wheel. They're so wide and far apart that I actually can't touch the steering wheel with my hands. It's one or the other. You can only rest one arm and you end up leaning a lot. I'm six feet, 210 pounds. I guess if you're bigger than that, this seat will fit very well. There's a lot of room, leg room in this thing. I do not find the seats as comfy as the F-350. I'm not sure what's different because they all have uh, these aftermarket seat covers. I've already done 600 kilometers in this thing. I'm gonna do another 600 today. This has the 10-speed uh, automatic transmission. And uh, while the 5-liter has fun power, revs really nice, sounds really good, on the uphills with the 10-speed, I find you feel like it's bogging down. It just doesn't have the pulling power. And if you shift into manual, you'll have to downshift probably four shifts before you find a gear that pulls it enough. So it doesn't have uh, a lot of pulling power that I would like. I mean, I guess if it's just your, you know, Joe homeowner's truck for taking his utility trailer to the garbage dump, probably good. But I'm a diesel guy. I'm used to hauling a lot of weight all the time. When it comes to the handling of this thing, I'm really impressed with how all the uh, half tons have started to feel like you're driving a car. This thing has quite a low stance. So in the corners, it really handles, like you can really push this thing in the corners. You almost feel like you could go auto crossing with it. Feels, for some reason, it feels like it has more body roll to me than the F-350 did. But this thing has a lot more kilometers than that too. It does have a little bit soft suspension in the back end, like when uh, you hit a bump, you can you can feel it in the back end. But it's it's really nice. Like anybody who's driven a car can jump in this thing and feel comfortable driving it down the road. Whereas you know my Dodge Dually, for example, I I can't hand the keys to anybody with that. It's uh, only a very few can drive that thing. It's just too wide. You can't trust them to do the right procedure when it comes to starting it because it's got all the aftermarket upgrades and you gotta wait to start and let it idle down, all that kind of stuff. But no, it uh, handles really nice. It sounds good. Like it has awesome power, I'll give it that. Um, the five liter is, is an awesome powerhouse really fun for a daily driver and for pilot trucks uh, I've seen a lot of uh, Dodge half ton Chevy half tons and uh, our company uses mostly F-150s there's a few Chevys in the fleet but they all seem to uh, have the same tick <laughs> when I uh, parked at my hotel a couple of days ago with this thing I heard a few of the other pilot trucks all flash up in the 
Dodges and the Chevys, and they were all ticking like this, so I don't know if that's just a lack of service. I've done a few trips in the backseat of this thing when we've delivered vehicles and somebody else was driving, and the backseat is horribly uncomfortable. After a few hours, I had just massive knee pain back was getting sore just it's just an awkward back seat but the cool thing about the back is if you flip the seat up the floor I've slept on the floor of one of these a couple of nights doing uh, long trips and there's a lot of room if you flip the seat up and you know lay blankets and cushions down a six foot man if you sleep kind of crooked you can actually fit on the floor not bad in here which is more than I can say for any of the other companies so it's got lots of floor room, just the back seat sucks. This thing's a little weird. Um, when one of the other guys hooks up his, uh, he plugs in his cell phone to the battery charger, he gets the Apple, um, all the Apple Play pops up and all the apps will show up from his phone, like text messages, and he gets text messages on here. If you plug my phone in it, which I have an Apple, uh, iPhone 13 X Pro, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't do that. But he's got basically the same phone. He plugs it in, and we haven't been able to figure out why does it do that. I don't want messages coming up on that screen when I'm driving. I enjoy the peaceful drive over the mountains. So I'm not one of those where I need to be connected to everything all the time. So I don't understand why it does that. I'm sure it's something minor. I don't think it's a glitch in the system. There's probably some setting in my phone, maybe. But I like how all the buttons here are so big for you to find uh, on the digital screen. It's very easy to find everything when you're driving. Very simple to use very clear obviously the dimmer switch in this thing is turned down right now because it's uh, daytime I'm sure it's gonna get brighter once it gets dark and I'll have to find that switch that uh, that gentleman was so nice to tell me it's on the left side over here <laughs> I still haven't uh, found it we'll find it when I stop so we're well guess we're about four hours into this trip now and after two hours I literally want to cut this headrest off and throw it out the window. It doesn't go back far enough. And you know that feeling you get when you've been uh, looking down at your cell phone too long, your neck starts hurting? Well, I have uh, two vertebrae in my neck are fused together. And I haven't had neck pain at all for quite a while. And all these trucks I've been driving, I've probably driven about 30 different trucks over the last couple months. This seat is by far the worst, even compared to trucks with sacked out seats. This is the worst long distance traveling seat I've sat in. And when we get there, we're not gonna make it all the way there tonight because uh, the driver's gonna run out of hours. So we stop in Chetwind and uh, I'm probably just gonna sleep in a truck and see how, what it's like to sleep in tonight. Because when you're on pipeline, you get LOA for the day, live out allowance. And when you get 185 bucks for the day to live on, and the hotels in Chetwind are 135 and up plus tax, well, buying food on the road, it's not hard to spend 50 bucks a day, so you're using up all your LOA. So if I sleep in the truck for a night, I get to keep most of that. So I've decided if I'm sleeping in the front seat or the back seat, I'm probably going to try both. <laughs> So that's where we're at now. The camera shows the headlights are way brighter than they actually are. Oh, we got a car come up, see if it changes. Yeah, see that changed on its own. And what you see on the camera right now is nothing like what it really is. The low beams are so horrible, you can hardly see the yellow line. But of course, uh, that's not what the camera sees, that's pretty amazing. So I have to use the light bar most of the way. I've had to stop four times to clean the headlights because once they get dirty, you can 
hardly see anything at all. And it's not even snowing. It's the conditions are spectacular. A little bit of fog once the vehicle passes you. You get a little road grime on the headlights, and that's it. You're done. And the uh, funny thing is, I passed quite a few new Fords coming at me. You know, the brand new ones with those crazy headlights. Looks like a big C on it. Those things are so bright. It's insane. Like I said, are those in this thing? Yeah, you can see I got my uh, my flashy lights on because the uh, low beds behind me. So I do have to say, aside from the howl of these Goodyear Wrangler tires that are on this truck, it's normally really quiet. If it wasn't for the tires, I'd probably be able to hear any types of noises that the engine might make. But most of the time, I just hear the howl of those tires. Other than that, it's really peaceful in here. And I did just learn something. The best way to alleviate the pain in my neck is to put your foot down. sound good or it's got that going on for them on all their trucks and that's actually the only time I've uh, put my foot down I think we should see pretty good mileage out of this thing I'm going to guess will easily be between 700 and 900 kilometers to a tank of fuel I don't know what a tank of fuel costs in this thing because I filled it with a tiny tank so I don't know how many liters I put in but I'm pretty sure you can google that information if you really really want to know but, uh, yeah, so far this gets uh, way better mileage than the uh, F350 with the 6.2 I was driving. But I've kept it between 80 and 90 kilometers an hour most of the trip. So, you know, 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. Because I'm waiting for the uh, low bit behind me. I've not had to use four-wheel drive at all. So, mileage-wise, uh, I'm going to say this thing's pretty good. For the last month, month and a half, I've probably been driving anywhere from 4,500 to 6,000 kilometers every week. And uh, now I'm starting to feel the effects of it. My body's feeling pretty beat up. <laughs> I get out of the truck and my knees just aching in the backs. You know, I'm getting all cramped up. So to actually be able to get into a pickup after driving semis you know, off-road and all the winter conditions and mud getting in pickups has been a really nice break and the fact that I have to get into Fords because our company buys just about all Fords is kind of funny because I've been a Ford hater for quite a while and I should probably say why I hated Ford because I didn't it wasn't like that before I loved five liter Mustangs Growing up, Ford was always great. You know, the, the, I got to experience the 78, 79 Broncos, which I loved. And then the five liter Mustang era hit. And uh, of course, Mr. White showed up in my life and five liter Mustangs just started coming in the door like crazy at our shop. And then after you get so many customers after a while with their, um, their own ideas and this customer wants a spoiler and that customer wants a spoiler and they all got these crazy ideas that just don't work for me so that kind of started to wear me out I needed a break from the Mustangs but I've always loved their Mustangs right from then to now from whenever they started right to the brand new ones and they just kept getting better and more fun loved all their pickups I was a huge fan of Bigfoot growing up Bigfoot was like my hero I thought it was an actual human being loved it so much and then Ford showed up with the six liter <laughs> in the early 2000s and I had so many friends I had so many problems with them like we're talking an obscene amount of problems so I started getting a little bit of a thorn in my side with Ford pickups and that uh, that half ton they made you know the 97 to 04 I just thought it was one of the ugliest trucks they ever made and with all the issues it came with it was a lot I had a lot of friends with a ton of issues on those things so started not liking the Ford pickups and uh, they still had me when they brought out the Ford GT 
you know, they had the 5.4 supercharged, 550 horse. I was just head over heels in love with that car. And then the EcoBoost happened. The EcoBoost happened. And that's when my opinion of Ford really crashed. I could not stand the sound of the EcoBoost. And they started pushing that motor everywhere and I didn't understand why are you doing that? Why are you doing that to yourself? All the mechanics at the Ford dealer would come into our shop and be complaining about them. <laughs> and then they had the nerve to put it in the Ford GT and I don't care how good the car is, you ruined it by putting an EcoBoost. You had so many other options with all the technology, you could have done something new and you put a V6 in it. What a disgrace. And that's when Ford lost me. I just became a Ford hater. Well, not to mention my brother had bought a brand new uh, 2008 F350 diesel. You know, the one where you have to lift the cab off to do the fuel pump. I don't know if somebody's discovered a better way by now, but back then the dealership wanted 30 hours to do it. That's just ridiculous. Like, what a horrible design. So, you know, the, uh, the 2000s is what burnt me on Ford. That's when I became a Ford hater. But I always loved the Mustangs. I always loved the Ford GT until the new one. So now I'm having to reevaluate them. Driving the V8s is fun. I'd like to drive their new power strokes, see what their uh, diesels are like. Hopefully I get that chance before I go home, but I don't know. I think I'm two days away from going home. We'll see. They keep changing the plan. I thought I was going home yesterday. Somehow I ended up driving a pilot truck. This is why it takes a while when you're driving the pilot car. We're doing 35 kilometers an hour right now up a hill because we're waiting for the, uh, the low bed. It's a while I haven't done a lot of kilometers. We're uh, right around 400 kilometers and at exactly half a tank. Just takes a lot longer climbing these hills. And one thing I forgot is I have this big wind sail on top. So I am uh, pretty confident with that thing up, I will see about 700 to 800 kilometers to a tank. And if this thing had been, you know, babied, maintained really well right from day one, I'm confident you'd probably get 900 kilometers to a tank out of this thing, which uh, that's pretty impressive. Ford, you're, you're winning me over here a little bit. The last test is going to be the sleep test, and we're almost there. This is home sweet home for the night. A pillow in a sheet. We'll see how that goes let you know in the morning. Well, it's morning time. I'm at a card lock station to fuel up. I figured we might as well see how much this thing uh, takes. And the back seat is definitely decent to sleep on. A six foot man will fit all the way across the back seat. Maybe if you're just under six feet, you'll actually sleep just fine back there. I'm surprised. But we have the fuel, low fuel level thing come on. It says we have 72 kilometers to empty. And we are between empty and a quarter. And I've gone 560 kilometers, but I did let it idle all night long for eight hours. And when I woke up this morning, I noticed the gauge had dropped a bit. So I'm pretty sure I would have seen about 700 kilometers to a tank if I wasn't horsing around with the throttle and uh, didn't let it run all night. So last thing to do is let's see how many liters this thing takes. So it took 113 0.62 liters to fill this thing again and at $1.79 a liter that's $203 to fill this truck up <laughs> that's a big holy crap these days but all in all Ford you won me over with the F-150 I tried to hate this truck since 1997 I would see one on the road and I just refused to like them but I think you made a pretty good truck. I mean, uh, with all the, the amount of electronics that are in here, for it to not have any issues with any of them after the abuse this truck's taken for so long with so many different drivers, 
I think that's pretty awesome. And uh, I know it'll do easily 700 kilometers to a tank. I think if you baby this truck, and like I said before, maintained it really well right from the get-go, I think with the right driver behind the wheel, you'd see 900 kilometers to a tank. Just my guess. So there you go. Sorry it took so long, but I thought we might as well film everything I can with this while I'm on the road. I, uh, I've been in this thing for 15 hours now. And uh, now we're headed back. Another 600 kilometers back to go pilot another one.